TV. But if you've been over to the Good Things Facebook group yet today, you'll know it's National Cookie Day. And so we're asking you, what is your favorite cookie? You can tell us there or you can tell us on the C Spire text line, 601-879-4395. And to celebrate, we got the best in the business when it comes to cookies in the studio with us, which you can see her over at Super Talk TV as well. Beth Hennington, she's the Vanillin. I still love that name. Yeah, and last, it marks almost a year ago. Well, it has been a year ago that you were on Food Network's Christmas uh, Cookie Challenge. That was season six. And yeah. you even got some reruns coming up. That's cool to be yeah. like, you're in the rerun sort yeah. of phase of things now. <laughs> Do you ever think you'd have like reruns of no. yourself on TV, Beth? No. no, never thought about a rerun, but that's probably where I need to live in the reruns. <laughs> I don't know. People do pretty well when it gets to the fact that they want to replay what you guys uh, what you guys did a year ago. So we actually got to talk to you, I guess, as the show was developing last year. You came yeah. on for the first time. You, but you have been doing cookies professionally, man, a lot longer than this last kind of year. But how has this last year kind of just spiraled in the best way for you since the show? Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, so many different opportunities. The doors that it has opened has just just phenomenal. I've been the closing speaker at Cookie Con. I've taught classes all over the U.S. It's just, it's just, I'm speaking engagements. It's just fabulous. And you, th- fabulous. who'd have thought po- folks would be that into or, cookies? Right. Or I decorating. Mean, but I think it's one of those things you feel like you, like there's a lot of us who feel like we could get better at it for sure. I think we all could get better at it. That's number one and then if you are artistic there's a lot of folks really leaning into it as sort of a hobby or a oh, side cool. gig Cookies and all the things are like pine trees they're everywhere they're, they are definitely <laughs> everywhere. everywhere and people like them and then they get eaten and then you need more of them so that That's makes right. for a great uh sort of product to sort of put out okay tell me about uh cookie con is that kind of like Comic Con, but for for cookies? cookiers, yeah. yeah. So cookiers. if if you're not a cookier, explain Cookie Con to us. So Cookie Con is a convention every year, um, held in a different place in the U.S. somewhere, and we get together and we cookie. We make cookies. We have cookie classes, um, and there are people there from beginners who are just learning how to hold a piping bag, all the way to people that are painting. And, you know, just honing in on their skills. Where would you say is the hardest to teach? Um, or who is the hardest to teach, should I say? The beginner? Kiddos. Oh, kiddos. She said she said kids. kids. Yeah, I look over and, the, you know, they're like got the icing bag, head tilted back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did a uh, a cookie decorating class for my daughter, her, for my oldest, for her seventh birthday. I was big pregnant yeah. with her sister, and never again yeah. because of that reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's load up. Se- mm-hmm. Maybe if they were older, it was a cute idea yeah. to think about. Beth, in theory, in theory, <laughs> yeah. but then it's you know, yeah, that's a lot of sugar and mm-hmm. a lot of seven year olds, and yeah. it doesn't. Unless you have an open field for them to then go run and sort <laughs> yeah, of enjoy. Right. It doesn't it doesn't end well no. um, in that way. What's the largest cookie class that you've taught so far? Um, 100 plus, probably 115. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, what was the ba- Okay, so what was the basics of that class? Um, teaching painting and how to paint royal icing transfers. And then put them on said cookie. So they look more realistic? Yeah. How long have you been in the cookie business, Beth? About five years. So what is the biggest trends that have changed over the last half decade? Like when you first got into it. Cookie, well, okay, so cookies have really kind of changed the cookie game. I mean, the party game. Think about parties that you go to now. Bridal showers, weddings, birthday parties, like there's cookies at every event you go to now. That that wasn't a thing, Mm-mm. you know. And so that's I think people thought it was a fad. Hey, all these people doing these cookies, but it's it's kind of here. Is it because you can personalize them? I think so. And eat you them? can make it <laughs> and eat them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and like when I go, like if I'm teaching at say Holmes Community College here and teaching their culinary class, I can, um, you know, I can make that a specific Holmes logo cookie. And that's that's something everybody that goes to homes wants. Is a cookie you know? that right? That's something that everybody yeah. wants. So you can personalize it. You can personalize it. When you first started, how big were like? Was it just selling by the dozens, or were you still getting like larger <laughs> orders? Yeah. So when I first started, I charged thirty five dollars for my first dozen, and I was tickled pink that somebody bought it because it wasn't good. It didn't taste good at all. 
And that's kind of the part too. Like if you to to be a good cookier, yeah, is not because you. I feel like we've all been in that uh, boat, Beth, where we've seen really good looking ones uh-huh. and then bit into them. It tasted like we were biting into a rock, <laughs> like our cardboard, our cardboard, yeah. and then that was a letdown. Or you're like, oh, it's lacking on the beauty side, but then you bite into it. It's, it's like, like this good. is the best thing <laughs> I've right. ever put in my mouth. Right. Which I think most folks. I guess unless they're taking photos, would prefer a cookie that tastes good. So did it take you a while to perfect the right cookie recipe to then be able to cookie cut that would keep its... I wouldn't say it took me a while because, I mean, if this is what you're doing full time, you pretty much got to get that real quick. (laughs) (laughs) Or you're not going to have, you know, repeat business. Um, You're just going to be making people mad. So I I, I honed in on that pretty quick. But I I mean, in the beginning, the very beginning, bless whoever bought those, I'm so sorry. Do you remember what they were? Do you remember the decorations? Um, Yes, they were little Frappuccino cookies because my daughter does, you know, makes cookie cutters. And they were Frappuccinos and they were god awful. They were cute, but they did not taste good. Did they come back? Was it a repeat customer? It was because I did apologize profusely. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. This is a terrible product. But if you come back next time and give me another 35, I promise we will improve on the taste. So what, right. what is it? Because cookie, making cookies really is a, baking's a science. I feel like you can really screw up cakes quickly. You can really <laughs> screw up cookies, I think, even faster. They just And I think right now most of us are looking forward to that time where we're going to and, and have that tradition of making our homemade cookies for, you know, putting out for Santa. Right. And it's okay if they don't look good. That's part of the, that is part of the fun when it's just you and your family. Yeah. But then there's some who are trying to maybe do a little better and you, you, you do the, you know, you do the thing and then it doesn't come out like the thing. Like right. the Christmas tree comes <laughs> out like a big blob. <laughs> the only thing that usually gets right is the ornament because it's just round <laughs> but you know the candy cane and all the other things can can right. morph into things that aren't what they're supposed to be yes. what's why is it morphing it's because this like you said there's a science in baking but there's also a science in the icing so the royal icing is your kicker so once you figure out your royal icing you're actually golden there's different consistencies and you're going to use thicker for a christmas tree versus a thinner flood for your ornaments but you can't like you said if you're doing it at home and you're doing it with your kids Buy the buy the dough that's in a roll and take it out, roll it out, and let them cut shapes. It's going to be just as good, and they're going to have just as much fun. So take the pressure off yourself yeah. by actually having to make the yeah. actual cookie from Absolutely. scratch. I think that's a that is a that's some good advice. Unless you just enjoy having the mess around your house, that's right. or like right. seeing them turn out into what's it coming out of the oven to look like this. There you go. You know, sort of this time. And if you're looking for a good royal icing, I do have the royal icing recipe that I use for free on my website. Oh, what's your website? The vanillin.com. So do you do you turn your nose up at folks who use like store bought icing? Absolutely not. I want the All I say, absolutely. absolutely no. like, you are vanillin. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you do buy store bought icing, take it out of that can, can, put it in a bowl and use your hand mixer and whoosh, Woof it up. Really? Yep. And then I'll make it just take it to the next level. Voila. Then you just so is the is it really just in the in the piping, like in yes. the in the presentation of it? Mm-hmm. Can you have too much icing? Absolutely. Really? I yeah. Well, I'm a, I, that's what I like going for. Well, I, I'm and I, I say that because I'm not a huge fan of the icing. So people that are would be like Vanilla. Now I like to use like the icing's the dip, and then the cookie is just the utensil in which to get it with. But that's the beauty of making them, <laughs> <laughs> making them at home. But then that's also the beauty of having someone make them for you, so then you don't have to do all of that um, mess together. Right. So I hear you're booked out for until next year. Till May of next year. How does that feel? It's thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> So I'm, yes. I would be curious at what like your daily routine looks like in terms of do you just wake up? I just imagine you have like I imagine that you're well, you're the vanilla. And so it would be not quite like Santa's workshop, but with a little <laughs> bit of an edge that you just wake up and you kind of have all of it going at once. Yeah. Until it's a sundown. hot mess. 
<laughs> Truly. Do you make the is your is your kitchen at well, you know what, that's a good place to All stop. Right. We'll ask you that. Is your kitchen in your home? We've got more. If you got questions for the Nillin, six oh one eight seven nine four three nine five. It is National Cookie Day and we'll get to some of your favorite cookies coming up next to Talk T V. We're continuing our conver- conversation <laughs> with the Vanillin, the cookie queen, Beth Hennington. <laughs> Last year she was on Food Network's Christmas Cookie Challenge, season six, which will start when when do reruns reruns start, Beth? I uh, think the six and the seventh and then that way if you want to catch them that way you can um if not though you can see your work all over social media where you post the most beautiful cookies that you've Thanks. been commissioned to sort of make but past like the decorative ones it's national cookie day so other than your sugar cookie that you make to decorate what would be your favorite cookie beth i make a lemon cheesecake cookie that is so good it's just sinful it has a graham cracker crust bottom and it is it's just divine. Yes. And yeah. you brought us today, Rhino and I. I what did you bring us? I brought you some gingerbread crackle cookies. And they were, slap your mama, pretty delicious. The only thing that was missing was my cup of coffee, yeah. which you brought yeah. us enough. I'll just, you know what? I'll just have to make a pot <laughs> there you go. to enjoy, enjoy the next one. So when you got into the cookie business five years ago, was it decorating that was your main or were you already making all kinds of cookies? Because those who just decorate to sell don't always bleed into other cookies to make. But there's a whole world of cookies out there that don't need decorating. Correct. Um, I've always baked, and I always baked with my grandmother, mother, daughter. So we, we, we're just bakers. Um, and so I've always made cookies um, and then eventually started into the decorating side of them. So it was initially just, you know, baking. We have Scott and Canton on the Ceasefire text line, Beth, that says chocolate, hey. coconut, and nut fudge oh my are his favorite. And then my mama's homemade chocolate oatmeal cookies. And then Matthew the bagpiper has to be wah, wah, wah as a diabetic. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, Matthew. I know it's part of it. Anything that's <laughs> sugar-free, which is for a baker, just you're like, ah. Yeah. But, know. hey, they've come a long way they really have. in recipes and products and things that you can uh, do for that. And there, there's a cookie for everyone there is. out there. There's dairy-free. There's gluten-free. Mm-hmm. There's sugar-free. There's all kinds of cookies. You just have to – are those more niche, though, because baking is a science, Beth? Do you really feel like those who excel in maybe the food allergy category – you know, one or the other, or yeah. can you do both? I think you can do both. It just takes a lot of time in the development, in the research and development side, because there is a lot of testing. Because, I mean, you, you can not put it, but it still needs to taste good, mm-hmm. you know? Especially if you're going to put out out there and put your name on it, uh-huh. which you were telling us or um, off air, Beth, that you have a free a recipe on your website for pecan pie cookies. Oh, girl. And I think of all the cookies I've ever had, I don't know if I've ever even mm-hmm. heard of that. So is this a Beth Hennington original? Yeah, you're or, welcome. <laughs> or is this something that maybe I have just am today years old and have never heard about? No, I think pecan pie cookies have been around, but this one is one that I just played around with, and it is, it's 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 golden. Is it hard to make? No. I was like, does so it have easy. the does it have it the has filling? The good, yeah, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we will link that to um, in the Good Things Facebook group okay. uh, later. That way, to make it easy for folks to see, if you want to take a twist to your um, holiday gathering instead mm-hmm. of just a pecan pie for those that sort of enjoy it. What's the hardest cookie for you to make, Beth? The hardest cookie was probably okay. So uh, when I was on the Food Network, I made a maple bacon pecan cookie um and it had liquid smoke in it it's it's just so complex i mean it just it's mm-hmm. hard to make you know to like to get it right it's not hard to and make. under it's pressure just, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why I feel that way. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's I mean, one time. thing. To, you're timed. you got all these folks looking down on you. There's, like, money on the line, all the yeah. things. You know, that takes your stress level yeah. to sort of the next. We we went to break talking about maybe what a typical day looks like for a professional cookie or who is booked out until May of 2024. So what I know today has been a busy media day for you. You've been on national news this morning, <laughs> yeah. local news here with us on Good Things. And um, and all to talk about cookie day, but on a baking day, like what does it look like in your Santa workshop? So it is kind of like Santa workshop and I do have a day where I bake. So I will get up really early. And when I say early, like I go to bed after Wheel of Fortune and I'm up at like four or four thirty and I'll have a baking day where 
every cookie has been designed Um, which design day is actually harder than baking day, to sit down and design these sets for the themes. And, you know, if he wants Winnie the Pooh or... Because it's not every cookie's the same. That's right. Or you want a nutcracker theme or sitting down and actually designing what's going to go on each cookie and kind of drawing it out is... It's a lot more time-consuming than actually going into the kitchen and baking. I mean, I can... You know, I can sling some dough and bake some cookies quick. Um, And I do that on a certain day. So I have a design day. I have a bake day. I have an icing day. And I have a decorating day. So it doesn't all happen in one day. It's like a whole three or four or five day process, you know, when somebody calls and they're like, hey, can you, you know, can I get two dozen cookies tomorrow? (laughs) Tomorrow, Yeah. Oh, "Uh, you're cute. That's so fun. <laughs> yeah, no. 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 But I think too when you when you talk about the level of skill or just the intentionality to it and you think too like the artistic side of it. Yeah, I mean it just takes a lot of time. You don't necessarily just whoop out oh, something, no. you know, that that easily. Right. Because you you're I mean, you're a business owner and you work you wear I wear every hat. So after all the decorating's done and they're drying and then I go back and paint them or highlight them and then they have to be bagged and heat sealed and then they have to be packaged and then they have to be picked. It's a lot. I won't say the strangest because that's probably not the best adjective, Beth, but the <laughs> most interesting request you've gotten for cookies that's family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the um, the Tony's Tamales. Uh-huh. I made cookies for Tony's tamales that that's here in town, you know, local. How do you make a tamale I, cookie? Right. I mean, it looked like a tamale, and it you just didn't want to. It was so confusing, that you know. It, yeah, because you thought you, it would look. You thought it so it looked as realistic as a yes. tamale. Yes, and so you're like, hmm. Well, they're they're gonna have fun with these, and then they probably did. They did. What's yeah. the most requested? Oh dear God, Paw Patrol. Really? I hate Paw Patrol. <laughs> Vanilla coming out in you. Yeah, I do. I no longer take Paw Patrol. <laughs> oh, bless it. I was just going to ask for a favor of summer 2024. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I think things absolutely do come into their faces. I'm surprised you didn't say something like Frozen or some of uh, the other ones, but they would probably, that's interesting, Paw Patrol. They're having their moment in the cookie world, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Poor, poor Ryder and the rest of the gang. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your favorite? What is your favorite kind of, or is there, I guess they're all different. So when you get a client that wants something or commissioned, or do you like the off the wall ones? Like what's your favorite, I guess, uh, celebration or moment of joy to be a part of? Something that, oh, well, oh, so event or, or not. whatever. Um, I love a good baby shower. I love a good baby shower. But theme wise, I like to do something that I've never done before. So I like, if somebody calls me and wants 600 cookies, I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that same thing over and over and over and over and over. Like, I would go crazy. But if you call me and want me to do two dozen of something and it's something I've never done, then that's, oh, yeah, I'm on it. That looks, that's a lot of fun. What's the most you've ever done for an order? 600 it's, cookies, like, true? Like, could, Yeah. No, I, I, th- I had a 1,000. Yeah. For what? Yeah. I think Paw Patrol? Was, Is no, that why we don't like Oh, absolutely not. No, it was a school. I think oh, it was okay. a school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. So if people are wanting, if they're thinking they want a vanilla and cookie, they need to go ahead and think about getting on the docket for 2024. Yes, for the summer of 2024. <laughs> that's pretty, that's yeah. impressive. When you, five years ago, because you were a full time, if I remember correctly, you were in real estate mortgage. I owned a mortgage company. You yeah. owned a mortgage company. When you hung, thank God you got out of that when you did. Yeah. <laughs> Traded I mean, in the warranty deeds for piping bags. Uh, when you when you stepped away, not knowing what we all know now in terms of that, but yeah. um, was it? I mean, did you know it'd be successful, or did yeah, you give yourself not. a timeline? No, I had no clue. But I mean, you know, you you. I think when you, I've always been entrepreneurial and done things. You know, I've mm-hmm. owned a mural business. Owned, you know, art's always been there just not in the forefront. And so I knew I had the ability. And I think when you're backed in that corner, you just know you have to. You just do it. Like, there's there's not an option. There's not an option. Yeah. Well, now you've got plenty of options. And if folks want to catch you on Rerun, which sounds so much fun, it will be on the Food Network. It's the Christmas Cookie Challenge, Season 6. You said that starts? 
The sixth and seventh, I think. I mean, you can watch it anytime on Discovery if you have Discovery, but uh, Food Network, it will yeah, be on the sixth. If you're flipping and channels, you'll see that. Where can they go to keep up with you for any other exciting updates or news you may be sharing, Beth? I'm the Vanillin on all social media. On all social media and your website to get that free pecan cookie recipe? TheVanillin.com. Or you can just go to the Good Things Facebook group. I will be posting that shortly. All right, Beth, you'll have to come. We'll have to make December 4th our day. Yay. So we'll, well, can you go ahead and schedule me on December 4th, 2024? I got you, girl. Okay, bring me some more cookies next time. You got it. All right, y'all Thank stick with this. We got more.